Hello and welcome to Concert Pipeline. That's Jens Schiffel. And that is Steve Jones. And Jens, today on the program we have an artist named Ethan Gold. Uh, he is putting out the first of what is to be a three-part uh, series, or a three-part album, I guess you could say, call, called Earth Cities 1, 2, and 3. The first part is called The Longing um, and is set to come out June 11th, so you can check that out. I've had a chance to hear it. It's really good, um, but we'll get into that in uh, a little bit. Um, and first, say hello, why don't you? Yeah. Hi. What? <laughs> this is it's like you've done one or two of these before maybe uh it's been a know. while i think uh you know it's been at least a week at least a um, week but yes i just wanted to say steve it's good to see you again uh That's you look just you. like yourself and uh i'm gonna cheers you a glass of monster because i need to make it through the second half of the day so i will cheers you water and let you know that i'm not looking at you at all during this pod uh because you have your distracting background so <laughs> oh yeah the sexy lady Yes. Yeah, she's got uh -huh. she's got um, she's got a fabulous pussy. Yeah, <laughs> cat she's that is. She's got yes. a nice little kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, little pussy cat. Uh, I know. I love that cat. That's why we bought it. Uh, yes, of course. That, it's, that a, it's beautiful. Cute little yeah. cat was just so adorable. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I like what she's done with it. So beautifully um, integrated. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> anyway, How you been? yeah. I've been good. I've been good. Yes, it's been it's been a week. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the kids' school year, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I don't see my daughter much anymore. Uh, it's it's funny. Yeah. Like it's really pretty rare that I see I see her. Um, she had a sleepover at her friends last weekend, and yeah. uh, and then this this weekend for for four days she went camping with a different friend, um, and they were off the grid. So wow. I didn't couldn't even check in or anything, uh, and uh -huh. and so I saw her one night this week for a few hours. Uh, that was really about it. And <laughs> but so I got some good quality time with my son though. We spent a mm -hmm. whole weekend together. And yesterday, I mean, it was just it was just really awesome. Like we st uh, started the day and um, went for a bike ride to the the gas station and got him a donut. Um, I am uh, if you remember maybe from last pod, I think we talked about it doing thirty days of no added sugar stuff yes and yes so steve i, I thought about you last night i thought about it and i was going to ask you i was i'm uh -huh. waiting for the pod i'm not going to like text you or call you whatever because i just i just want to hear it you know on the podcast how are you doing with your whole sugar intake thing how are you doing with like self-management and you know uh uh self-discipline and uh you know in your honor um i went out and i bought a mm -hmm. snickers and i bought a um uh, Reese's Pieces thing, and uh -huh. I just had some munchies, and it took me about you're, five minutes to consume all of it. But you're, you're eating like, for the both Steve, of us. I like it. I'm eating for the both of you. Yeah, so that you don't have the cravings. <laughs> See, I, no. I'll take care of the cravings, but you don't have them. I, you know, I, I want it. You know, it's like, oh, that'd be nice. You know, sort of thing. But I can easily brush it aside. Um, I mean, so. Like it, my mom and sister came over the other day just to drop something off and they gave me five Costco muffins and those things are freaking monstrous and delicious. Right. Yes, uh, and, yes. <laughs> and I took, I took it and I said, thank you. And I took it directly to the garage freezer uh, where it still resides all five of the Costco muffins. Uh, and um, I got my son a donut. There was only one donut left at the gas station, by the way, an apple fritter, which is one of my favorites. Um, I cut it in half and gave him half of it and put the other half away for him to have today. Uh, ah. So, and I didn't touch it uh, at, at all. Um, not at today, all. Nope. Today. Not at I all. Not it. not once. You didn't like even lick your finger after. Uh, no. Just a little. Okay. Just a tip. Just a tip. So I today I would drop my son off at his mom's house, and uh, and it, my his cousins were over there, and there was you know a bunch of candy and and brownies and stuff, and they mm -hmm. were digging into. Like my, I guess my ex niece, I don't know what you call that, but my ex wife's uh, uh, brother's daughter, like whatever that amounts to for me, she calls me Uncle Steve. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, so what? We'll, we'll, call, we'll just call her my niece. <laughs> for, okay, niece, for, uh, good enough. For, uh, to uncomplicate it. Like she, she was like, oh, you should have a Reese, little, one of these little Reese's minis. I was like, oh, I can't, I'm not even having sugar right now. You know, and then later she's like, she reaches into the bag and gives me like six or eight of them. I'm like, okay, I'll take them home and save them for later. And I didn't even, I left them there. So, good, because that has not been good news. Whereas old Steve would have had all six before we got to the car and, and one of the brownies for good measure, uh, just because I can, right? And, uh, and right so, like so why wouldn't doing. you Be because you don't know what's going to happen later in life you know yeah you, you, you want to be able to consume that stuff before our life unexpectedly takes a turn for the worse I and know. you miss out that's that's yeah. what's important right but i will be making exception for uh our, you know birthday dinner on wednesday uh tracy's doing something i don't know about but uh but it i imagine it will have sugar in it and it is uh. not only un-american but uh and human to not have cake on your birthday so. <laughs> so so understood okay okay so uh is there a, like a time period where you can indulge um you, you know you got your hall pass is that you know between like 5 p.m and 10 p.m or is that only during the birthday dinner <laughs> or like i mean you've got to have some rules here it's between 5 and 501 p.m uh, everything I can fit in, I get <laughs> <laughs> one minute. <laughs> it's, uh, no, no, uh, hall pass. I don't, I don't even. Yes, just the birthday is my hall pass. You know, which right. um, I make an exception uh, for, and and my daughter's birthday as well when that comes around in next month because it's a, that's just a couple weeks away too. But uh, can you have some other birthdays in there, even though people know. you don't know? <laughs> I know. I think uh, yours is a little bit later, so, uh, yeah. so it won't be. Right. I, yours will be right. Yours will be just after, um, you know, after my stint is up, I think. So, um, so maybe for my birthday, there, but... we can, we can, uh, partake in the same rule that you've been following this whole time. Well, yeah. we won't have any sweets at all on my birthday, just <laughs> oh, in oh. honor of your <laughs> success of accomplishing this marathon. If that's how you're celebrating, I will support you in that. <laughs> yeah, probably won't. Probably won't turn out either, that way. But yeah. probably not. Probably not. But either way, I'm there for you. So um, sweet. But, but I was just going to say, also, you know, like I had a really good weekend with my son because mm -hmm. we 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 did that little bike ride. We went for a hike, a mile and a half hike. You know, I saw his old kindergarten teacher on the hike also. Uh, nice. And, um, and we took Basil, you know, our dog out mm -hmm. uh, on, yep. on the hike. Then we did another like three and a half mile bike ride, and uh, and we started. We spent a lot of good time together, and um, that's awesome. And was yeah. he a, was he a good trooper on the way, or? Oh yeah, he was totally. He was great this weekend, and you know, and this morning I sat him down when we uh -huh. when he got up, and I was like, hey, uh, you know, I wanted to just let just let you you know see if you had a good weekend. Um, mm -hmm. he, he said he did. I was mm -hmm. like, hey, it's really good for me too. This is especially because mm -hmm. we don't get a lot of time without your sister, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So enjoy it. Uh, wow. And uh, um, and we both did. So that's cool. So you sent me a picture uh, of you and your son out um, and about with, uh, I mean, a beautiful view. You're obviously elevated somewhere. And I think maybe it was Napa Valley or something in your background. Yeah, so that, that was the top of, um, you know, uh, the top of Westwood Hills Park in uh, okay. in Napa. Like where, what side of the, what um, side of the, um, the valley is that on? Is that like closer to Sonoma or closer to Lake Berryessa? Uh, um, it's, it, it's in Napa. So this is in Na uh, Napa. Um, it's near Browns Valley area, um, uh, like near kind of past the outlets sort of thing around there. So there's, okay. you know, behind a little bit, be like a mile behind the outlets. So behind you guys, are those, is that the shopping center or that's, is that all? It's, yeah, so that's all of Napa down, the, uh, down there. You can see a shopping center. I mean, uh, okay. I mean, if you look, look far enough, my house is back there near the uh -huh. hills. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't realize there were parks yeah. and stuff up in the hills. I just I never really thought about it. Yeah, we'll Except take you some by the river or whatever. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so it good was, for uh, you guys. It was, yeah, I'd say so, man. Uh, it, was, it was fun. Um, you know what I think? Uh, <laughs> as long as it's as long as you're not thinking sweets, let's go with it. it uh, I'm not thinking sweets. Uh, I'm thinking we should uh, go ahead and bring in the uh, the accidentals. Um, actually, you know what? Before we do, there is one other thing while we're 
kind of sharing pictures. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up on the pod that isn't really, you know, doesn't fit into music news really. Uh, so I'm going to uh, share it here um, on the on the screen as well. And it is um, it's been just over a year since um, COVID hit and Slims in San Francisco sh uh, shut down. Uh, right. Uh huh. This happened to, like two days ago where they uh, were taking off the lettering and everything. That is so Man, I would, sad. I would, I would take those letters and I'd put, you know, I'd, I'd put that somewhere in my, ha my house, you know, I'd just so, I've seen so many shows there at that venue and uh, uh, I'm not I sure know. what they're doing with it, but. I mean, this looks like an official contractor or something that's taking these down, right? Yeah, I mean, I hope I mean, they're going not to someone stealing in the museum or someplace, you know? <laughs> Slims yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, so many, many shows, uh, good shows I've seen there, and I, I, you know, miss it. And it's one of those things that, on the other side of this COVID thing, that you know we're emerging from, and concerts are coming back. Slims mm -hmm. is not one of those venues that's gonna gonna be yeah. there. Um, yeah, yeah. On the other side, so um, I think you're gonna throw it out there. So, all right. So let's go ahead and bring Ethan Gold on, into the program. Um, as I said, I had a chance to talk to Ethan Gold about his new album, um, tons of other topics, and stick around to the end of the interview because he's going to perform a couple of songs for the program as well, which was uh, a lot of fun. Great to hear live. I, I really loved it. And uh, let's bring in Ethan Gold. Hey, Ethan, how are you yeah. doing? Hi, can you hear me? I can. Uh, what's can your you name? Uh, I mean, I'm Steve Jones. Steve Jones. That's that is me. That yes. is uh, also a sex pistol. It is. It you is. Yes. A million times. No, no, you're you're the first. Actually, I appreciate you connect making the connection. So. <laughs> oh really? Am I the first? <laughs> no, no. Actually, yeah. I'll, I'll start with a funny story since you mentioned it. A uh, couple months ago, um, a band who I had interviewed, I'll leave them nameless, but they have a web show, uh, and they had reached out to me uh, to be on their web show because they were having like radio personalities and that sort of thing uh, on uh, yeah, on an episode of their uh, web show. Yeah. And uh, along the way, uh, I found, I, you know, in watching I, in watching their previous episode at the end where they said they were gonna have Steve, Steve Jones on, uh, you know, from the Sex Pistols and everything, I realized it was not me that they were expecting. But oh. <laughs> when well. I did it, I did end up showing up on their web show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on their we YouTube have show. a Steve Jones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They didn't make the cor cor correction on the show or anything. It was it was definitely pretty comical as they were obviously texting on the side trying to figure out what to do. And then they're like, we'll keep them in. And <laughs> how's, how's your cock? Should we, I, I, by the way, are, are we, is this, are we already live or what? what? We're, we're rolling. It's not live. I mean, it's, it's edited, but you know, oh. I, Okay, I, great. You know, I just yeah, was I, like, we should save our wit for when we're rolling. Because uh, oh. I don't, you know, it's like when you're in the studio, you don't want to re start, record. you know, play a bunch of takes and then like, okay, let's record. You're like, let's start. So we jumped right into stories, your stories. And so I just wanted to make sure that we were, we were rolling. And so if there's anything we need to, formalities we need to do anyway. Hello. Well, well it, we're, I'm glad we're rolling. So you can. We can go with the this. formalities too. It's all if, great. It's if, all good if, stuff. If this makes the di you know, this is the dialogue that we're having. This is the real conversation. It, it is, and you're prepared with a, a guitar. I know you're going to play a couple of songs, so we can do that at any point you're you're comfortable. We could do one at the beginning, one at the end, uh, both at the um, end, whatever you feel like. I can. Um, how long? Uh, how long are we talking today? A half an hour, forty minutes, something like that. Whatever. Sure. Uh, let's let's chat for a bit. Okay. Um, maybe I'll, uh, you know, not be a tease and put this <laughs> put this thing down. I know. I I like the music. I'm you know I'm getting excited for concerts to start coming back. I'll tell you, they're all starting to roll back out. So. Yeah, I was I was kind of like I uh, just you know this sort of live streaming thing. I you know for all even though we've been in the pandemic for long i still haven't like worked out my audio so that it's like you know i'm just still using like a mic there's no it's one one mic there's not a you know i don't have a mixer with reverb and so i'm like okay well, if this is going to continue a little bit which it seems like it is it's probably time for me to like get a setup that involves you know a little bit more audio control and and stuff so 
yeah. you know, the well, skills that we didn't think we'd have to learn. You, you know, nobody knew how often we'd be saying the word Zoom. Yeah. Uh, you know how frequently <laughs> no one knew that would be a thing but yeah. i'll tell you you know I, we used to do this podcast uh, going to concerts and interviewing bands at the show mostly once in a while we'd have a phone interview or mm -hmm. facetime or something along those lines but it's been really cool to get to talk to bands and musicians from all around the world you know we've had england australia yeah. you, know, you name it so many bands over the past year plus you know that we wouldn't have had otherwise so yeah it's, I hope I hope that that policy continues well with music, but also like with like commuting and stuff, people going to work or whatever, like there's no reason for all those cars driving around. No, you know, no. we have a lot of screwed up technology, but this is technology that can be really helpful for our habits. The, so the planet and everything. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> so let's use the ones that are helpful. You know, obviously we want to, we all want to, you know, get, you know hugs again so yeah. <laughs> but but like you know do we need to you know drive to work i don't know anyway not Doesn't not matter. every day yeah i i agree uh yeah well let's go back shall we uh tell sure. me about what music did you listen to as a kid what was on in your household and you know i mean i, I want to start there but i also want to talk about the dynamic with your your brother as well but. sure um, yeah, I mean, I grew up, uh, my mother listened to, um, that there was a lot, there was a, an interesting range of things. I mean, the things that I remember growing up strongly with were a little bit of Bob Dylan, um, Bob Marley also, the she Bob's. was listening to, um, and um, also actually like, Christmas time, we would have we would listen to Benjamin Britten, um, English composer, and um, Godspell, a uh, a musical, uh, also so uh, also a, a Christ focused musical. But anyway, so uh, so the, the, I, those just come to mind. You ask, those are the things that pop to mind as like things I heard. Oh, and Sant uh, Santana, I heard a lot of. I grew up in San Francisco, where that was like in in the. Uh, in the air you know yeah he of... i mean he's he's here i'm in napa by the way so oh you are um, okay yeah so yeah you know, yeah. yeah yeah where are you living right now i'm in la so i I've, I've, uh, migrated south like a like a bird but um or you know like a crazy person uh in this day and age but anyway uh uh yeah so so we grew it was an interesting range and i you know they had a there was a record collection. So I discovered my own things in the record collection. I've discovered Stravinsky, uh, which I was, I personally listened to a lot. Uh, there are a lot of sort of angry classical music. So, uh, and um, yeah, those were, those were like household things. For me personally, um, the, the first stuff that I got really into, like kind of without, you know, parents record collection influence was david bowie um i i would go to record stores and i would find things in fact i found a brian eno record which i just liked the cover and i sort of vaguely heard of him and this record another green world which became a big thing for me really in the sense of like what you could do with arrangements even though i'm a songwriter um that kind of eno approach to sonics and to allowing you know sort of sonic pictures to to change or or you know each song to be kind of a unique sonic picture even though i'm i'm working not in an ambient you know world right now although i've done stuff like that for soundtracks but but in the songs that i do i, I try to have an approach of like okay i want to write a song that can work on an acoustic guitar or whatever that, that has a that going for has the kind of whatever the sanctity of the word and the and the and the chord structures that you know work well with with the lyrics and all that and then when i go to recording which is a lot of what i enjoy which we won't be hearing today but uh, you know having arrangements that that create pictures in the head and and that combination of things um, to some degree i think uh, some of those records I discovered in record shops definitely kind of informed my approach of like, oh, you can kind of do whatever you want, you know, you can do anything. So uh, I try to apply that to my sort of, you know, 
sort of rock world that I'm in, but uh, but to have like a, a an approach that's liberated. So, you know. yeah, and uh, so, yeah. At what point did you, did you know that you know music was what you were really passionate about? Like, where where did that click for you? Um, I, I mean, I was it's when I was very little. I was I started writing songs before I really knew how to play instruments. I would write songs. I would sing. Um, and I didn't end up getting kind of like real lessons as a musician, which is something I've always sort of struggled with because of self-taught kind of um, tardily self-taught. Um, and uh, but but it was always in my head and which is maybe why I'm you know comfortable in the studio producing and stuff like that, because I usually kind of hear the whole song and all the parts um, and then bringing them forward is is. Uh, you know, I'm guided by what I'm hearing in my head. So, um, but yeah, I started writing pretty young and then learned, I started writing some like kind of classical-ish piano stuff, just making it up, sort of making up what sounded good. And then started writing songs as a teenager. I think I'd written some songs actually when it was like three, which I sang, which were kind of mocking, it were not the, I think I was reflecting the psychology of the household and <laughs> so I wrote some songs which are still quoted to me uh but um by family members um but yeah I kind of got serious <laughs> about songs like as a teenager you know they were that impressive like you, you know what were what were the lyrics well, I, think they were, the three? I think I don't want to repeat them but they were <laughs> they were they were uh, um in retrospect, I was critiquing what was happening in the household and uh -huh. um, managed to turn them into songs, <laughs> um, which were probably catchy. They were, um, you know, like a like a child's melody. They were insistent um, and I would shout them. Um, so, yeah, music as a as a, a self-defense tool and, you know, whether it's like that, which I'm being slightly kind of silly in my way of describing but but I think you know for me writing music is a form of kind of a form of uh comforting therapy for myself for others you know I I, I generally write in a sort of altered state um I'm not talking about drugs or whatever but I, but like I'm half asleep or I'm in a state that's not like the kind of uh, status where you can have a normal conversation. Like if you try to talk to me when I'm writing, it's, it's like, I can't, I can't even like get sentences together. I've read that. So you, you connect to muses that speak to you and uh, right. Is something you said about that. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's, I mean, so that's really interesting. Like, I mean, do you just like wake up and like have to write it down immediately or like, what does that, what does that look like? Really? Yeah. I, I, I dream songs a lot. Like, probably a couple times a week um, these days. I mean, it started slower than that. I remember the first few times it happened, there was somebody singing to me in a dream. A woman was singing and I woke up and was still kind of in that half state. And I felt, oh, well, I'm awake. What is that dream? What is that thing? Oh, right, there's that song. And then, and then you, I kind of, okay, that's a song, that's a, melody and a lyric that only existed through this form and so um i guess i wrote it down and turned it turned it into a song and usually all i can re i can't remember the entire thing but uh, you know i can remember some of it and um but often there's a whole setting to it you know i've seen uh, i've had a couple dreams where i was at concerts and seeing people perform like including like bands or whatever and it was like watching a band play a song and i woke up it's like oh that's a really cool song it was like and then i'm kind of like waking up and half it was like what is that what is that band what is that song oh okay and like the whole in that, that case like the entire arrangement and even like the energy of the production is like i'm just watching the whole there's there's a uh anyway so so i've had you know it comes in different forms but um but yeah, so then I, I typically, you know, can't really uh, do anything else until I've um, turned it, kind of finished it uh, as a as a piece. 
Wow. And so, so you'll see these songs kind of in their entirety, but they're not real songs that already exist. But it's like the band or the musician the, uh, are kind of channeling to you to, to kind of write this down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and some of them have been, I mean, there's only, there's a few, but they were just so kind of like almost comically strange that, that I was like watching Killing Joke basically play. And I was watching Bruce. These are the ones that, like, I think I've had a lot of these dreams about dream, song dreams, but not that many have been me watching another performer. But there were a couple, and it was so kind of, kind of a strange uh, variant of the idea of of dreaming songs, where it was like literally like I'm watching Bruce Springsteen waking up, going, you know, I, I think I like Bruce Springsteen more than I realized. And I was like, I like that song. Like, what is that song? I went online, was like typing all the lyrics and trying. Try, it was like. I guess this is not a Bruce Springsteen song. This is a song that I dreamed Bruce Springsteen was singing. Uh, and so, and same thing with it, actually with exactly Killing Joke, it was kind of like this band that was sort of a cross between like Killing Joke and like Nitzer Ebb or something. It was this really aggressive, pounding kind of strange, shouty, arty thing. Uh, so, but yeah, normally it's, you know, I, I've had these kind of female, a lot of times female figures, um, goddesses, I don't know how else to describe them. I, mean, I, I, I went to Sweden and I woke up, the first night I woke up in Stockholm, I was there um, and there was a dream of this kind of Nordic goddess coming out of the water and there was this crazy music um and i was like in some airbnb or whatever and you know and didn't have a piano or a guitar so i like kind of like did my kind of chicken scratch note notation uh to get it whatever fixated so i can remember it um so yeah it, it's a range of things but it's an odd i guess it's not that normal i mean it's not I'm not the only person who I, does this but it's not the norm I haven't talked to a lot of bands that have talk, told me about that, you know, kind of part of the yeah. process. So it's really interesting to me. I mean, and so like by the time you get to record it, like how close do you think it is to uh, to what you're, you know, you dreamed uh, it being? And do you remember the dream that far out by the time? Yeah, I can usually remember it because I've, is that true always? It's not probably not always true, but sometimes I can remember it. But I, I, I tend to take copious notes about the arrangement you know like as i'm writing the song I'm like okay in the second verse there's a string part an eighth note string part that's going to cut you know there's like I'll, I'll make notes or like here's the you know the drum beat should be and i have this like i'll write x x's and dots and stuff I, I don't write standard music notation i mean i can kind of do it laboriously but i have my own sort of system that where I write things down. And, and sometimes in the studio, definitely you, you discover things. It's not 100% done when you when I start recording. You know, it's not like literally just, but it can be kind of close to that. Like certainly like I'll have a pretty clear idea and then sometimes you find things don't work or whatever. Um, and these days more and more, to be honest, like uh, uh, recordings that are gonna be on my next record, I wanna have, um, you know, bring in more more other musicians, which I've started doing on this, record as well um prior stuff there are a lot of things where i didn't work with anybody else and that was more like a direct line but it, um i find it's kind of just more in for me right now more interesting to have other people bring in what they do and i'll, and I'll direct the kind of performances and have an idea of what i want but certainly i i like the idea of, of not controlling every aspect do you like generally produce your own music or do you like to bring in someone else as a producer sometimes and you know and get that kind of outside perspective i almost always have produced myself and it's something that um again i'm actually kind of curious to to not do that um i i have worked with other people on occasion but the the majority kind of the strong majority of what i've done has been self-produced which led to me producing other people because people you know heard my own productions and and you know i i got i've been asked to produce for other people um so 
I produced this guy Elvis Perkins years ago, his debut record, which isn't super well known, but there are certain people who are kind of obsessed with that record. So it's got like a, a small and and very um, committed like devotee circle around the world. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I I think that kind of arranging idea that that came into my process very early through a lot of the music that I loved was not just a sort of rock band or wasn't singer songwriter like here I am with a guitar generally the stuff that I've grabbed to more gravitated to more it's one thing that David Bowie did very well obviously working with many different producers but like this kind of like very colorful approach to to arrangement um I don't sound like him but but that sort of freedom of style is something I really like while while having like a strong voice as a as a personality or whatever you know I don't I don't it's it's there is a context to it it's not you know I I've had records that I I put out a record called Song from Toxic Apartment which was basically all home recorded and home played and home mixed and and um but I really struggled partly because of I think having not other people to bounce ideas off of I uh the impulses kind of got broader than I wanted them to ultimately so then I had spent a lot of time kind of massaging everything to make it feel like an album um kind of to to make you know songs that were like kind of heavy synth synth rock work with acoustic guitar songs but like have it work as an album so it doesn't feel like it's confused you know there's so it took a lot in a way in my like sort of latter portions of creating that record to sort of create a mood thing where it where those different colors all fit together um in a way walking in with other musicians were like okay if i bring in a guitar player and he plays on a bunch of songs that'll put a stamp on it but we'll create continuity i'm a big continuity liker <laughs> so, yeah 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 i mean and that's i mean evident with kind of having the trilogy of earth city i, th I think you know which we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute yeah. but but let's let's talk about your brother and your kind of relationship with with your brother um I sh we should mention he's your twin brother but you guys obviously grew up together the whole time <laughs> but um did were you both creative from the beginning or like where how do you channel that with each other definitely he started with a little super eight making like little films um very early which i participated in um but he was definitely the director um and uh and like little little to we called them fangy wangles but i don't know what they were called these little sort of finger frights anyway these little like to you know stop action you know things anyway so he he did stuff like that as a kid which i was a you know side assistant on and um but we've worked i mean it's honestly been both rewarding and at times incredibly difficult um if you look at the oasis boys you know it's it's like the the fights we've had have been really intense like really intense we we had a, a, a project we did as the gold brothers or now maybe the brothers gold but uh and we had we almost like couldn't this one dispute we had about something was so intense that it, because like a lot of create you know you hear about bands breaking up because of creative differences it's sort of cliche and sometimes it's that but a lot of times creative differences are like the sort of visible it's like an iceberg. They're like the visible part of what's actually a profound philosophical difference about like how to live life, you know? And and so the creative difference, and I think that's probably true in a lot of bands, you know, like, um, but our creative differences at times were like, I have a very different idea of how, how to live and my, my, spiritual and moral structure is there and like those things get exposed when when you're trying to work on a project with someone creatively because um you know what would be acceptable for one person isn't for the other anyway so those, those are the difficult things but also we've i've scored some of his 
I guess I've scored basically all of his movies. Um, and so that's been challenging because then I'm, I'm, my job is to, to support the film, you know, and I, uh, so it's not about my own ego and I, and I really want to kind of, which I've done in other films I've done as well, but I really try to pick up what the film wants, like what the film some kind of soul in the film that maybe isn't coming across without the music and to find that soul and bring it to the surface. Um, so I consider that my job when I do film scoring um, and I've done that for Ari as well, my brother. Um, and what's interesting about a couple of his movies is he's, both of his feature films had a big component of songs as well as like the score the under, so people don't know this, the, the score, or sometimes people say the underscore is like the instrumental music that plays, you know, more or less in the background, although it can be featured too. But, um, but both of these movies, one called Adventures of Power, which is about a air drummer. It's a ridiculous and fun, inspirational comedy, kind of epic comedy. Um, I did a bunch of songs that were like all over the map. There was like eight kind of deliberately cheesy 80s rock stuff. And I did like a Algerian rye style thing and some uh -huh. like Mexican uh, death kind of death metal. It was sort of more like a kind of more like speed metal. But anyway, uh, it was a huge range of, of, of songs as well as an underscore, as well as a score. Um, and his more recent film called The Song of Sway Lake, um, which some people may know out there, indie film, but um, it's, uh, I, I, the, the plot has these people looking for an old record from basically roughly 1940. And I suggested, it was like, why use a Cole Porter song? Like I should create something for the film. Um, and there's in the film, there's two versions, there's like a 1947, recording and a 1939, 1940 recording. So I created those for the film. So those are songs that show up as well. So that's something I was able to bring like a, a lot of my writing, like trying to write a song that would both reflect the the era that this piece of vinyl and the in the plot was supposed to be found, um, but also resonate with the, the the story happening in the movie. I was like, okay, we can make a song that is serving the the sort of mechanics of the plot of like, oh, here's an old record, but I can have that song really resonate with what's happening on screen. So um, anyway, that's something I've done with him and maybe that's a yeah as far as the sibling the sibling thing i mean what can i say it's like you know it's uh it, it can be fun and and i think we lean on each other more than we would if we there were not that you know blood relation like you hire somebody it's like you're not gonna ask people to do things above and beyond and and i think we do that for each other and i and he's directing a video for me now he's directed a couple videos for me i've also directed some videos for myself but he's doing a couple including one that'll be i'm not sure when this is airing but anyway uh a video uh for a song called brett and lonely city which is not out yet but which will be out very shortly uh the song will be coming out and then the video will come shortly thereafter and he's directing that uh now or kind of in the finishing phases um and I, and in that case, you know, I think we've been through enough that he's understanding where I'm coming from as a soul more than before. And this one feels better aligned with me than, than other ones that we've done together, where I think we had to fight more in this case, we, we didn't have to, like, I, we've worked some of these things out. And I think he kind of got where I was coming from as a musician and as a songwriter, we talked about it and he sort of we didn't have to fight. I don't know. It was, it's yeah. gone. It's gone nicely. So you can check and that out if it's if on. It'll be on YouTube soon. Yeah, yeah. This will this will drop in like a week and a half. So okay. um, yeah, we'll be right there. But uh, you you feel like you're able to kind of put the uh, the you know the challenges of the you know of, that you guys have together. Put that aside when you're kind of making you know the soundtrack. Or, you know, kind of when you're scoring the the project that he has, right? And really connect with the. Uh, the art itself 
Yeah, it takes like, you know, any composer like for film, like you have to do something with your ego. It's a kind of interesting because, you know, I feel my job is to serve the film um, and not to kind of come in saying I want this or that or whatever. And so that can be, it can be an interesting, you know, but you also have to have an ego because you need to be able to present your ideas strongly and make a case for for you know what you feel the film needs because it's not just like a plug-in you know you're, you're creating something that's a, very much affects the film so it's a weird combination of not having an ego and having an ego like you it's it's not it's not a simple task it's like composer communicator therapist you know, envisioner, I don't know, you, you, there's a lot of things that come into play with film scoring. Um, there's a lot more than just music that comes into play and in like understanding story. Um, and just, you know, like in the, in the case where I'm doing stuff with him, like working so that, you know, he's getting something that he feels good about. Yeah. And so speaking of story, I mean, this is, that's a good segue to Earth City. Um, which is broken down into three parts, uh, you know, Earth City 1, Earth City, City 2, and Earth City 3, which are coming, well, the first one coming out uh, June 11th, and then um, subsequently the beginning of next year and, uh, uh, and then the summer for, for that. So you already have this kind of planned out. Um, I've been able to hear Earth City uh, 1, but um, tell me kind of the idea of, you know, of kind of fitting into this trilogy mentality and um, and kind of the long game with uh, with all three albums. Um, I I as you may observe, I've got I don't think about songs the way maybe most people do. I don't know. I it's interesting the trilogy thing. This this record I was alluding to earlier, "Songs from a Toxic Apartment," also started as a trilogy. And part of my struggle with that album, um, in terms of making, I mean, I got great you know, the brain, nice, mostly, not entirely, but not some nice press on that record. Um, some people really connected with it and some people didn't, but some people really did. I'd rather have that than, you know, I'd rather have a mixed, including some strong opinions, but, but part of my struggle with that was that I had written this like crazy rock, what I was calling at the time a rock opera about like male violence and like growing up and sort of gangs and just, sort of young men's anger and it was this kind of huge thing and it, it kind of spiraled out of control in terms of like I, I had like 60 or 70 songs and it was just I the more I worked on it the bigger and more unwieldy it got um, but I it was definitely designed as a, as a trilogy with this sort of part one was this kind of descent and there was this rise of this kind of metal band that I invented for the musical this kind of like incredibly offensive and aggressive band and then it was just part three was a sort of redemption cycle anyway that was what that was and it, and it got I, I couldn't make sense of it I couldn't like figure out how to do it and, and part of it was I don't think I allowed myself like oh this could be a trilogy like it didn't even occur to me to make it an actual trilogy but it, the way I structured it it was like a three-act structure and I put out a few, you know, songs here and there. And I, anyway, so I think I've always been drawn to this kind of form of the like dialectic or whatever, like you have a problem, you go into something more deeply and then maybe there's a, a solution to it. And um, Earth City, which is really my kind of reflection on where we are as a civilization, um, particularly in cities, but I, in a way I was talking about the city as a metaphor for, our whole world being so interconnected now, um, yet at the same time, very kind of alienated, you know. Um, I, um, there's just a lot I wanna go into about that. And um, there's a lot I have to express about that. And so um, in th this time I took the trilogy thing and was like, okay, I'm not gonna try to, with that uh, songs from Toxic Apartment, what I ultimately did was like I'm going to take out every song, basically, because only do the most personal songs from that, and that's what became that record um, from the whole, you know, trilogy about young male crazy, 
violence and stuff. I was like, okay, let me just take the parts that are just, you know, the super personal things and the, and and turn that into the record and just forget the the um, the rock opera trilogy thing. Um, so Earth City, I, I'm I'm proceeding with kind of the way that that I envision it, and um, yeah, I'm I'm part one, the longing, which is coming out in June is really this notion of longing is something that I feel um, is sort of has been a little bit forgotten in our society, like the notion of just being able to give people giving themselves time to actually feel the emptiness and also to be searching for something, but they don't know what it is. It's kind of a vague form of searching. It's not like I'm searching for love or success or whatever it's like something's missing I don't know quite what it is but I'm that longing pulls people into themselves and I was reading a Robert Bly book recently and he actually was talking about about longing as as like a, a missing thing in our you know that this was part of like the human experience that's been forgotten uh, so that was kind of cool to see because that was sort of tapping into the same thought. Um, so this part one is really like the, the, it's the spiritual kickoff for the trilogy. And I, I don't want to say too much about where, where it goes. Cause, um, but there's a, there's definitely some, uh, they each have a theme uh, to them. And, and by the way, you gave a schedule. That's my most ambitious version of the schedule. It may be that the realities of, you know, the marketplace or whatever that like, I, I may need to slow it down a little bit from from what you said, which was my intention for the release schedule, but I wouldn't be surprised if it if it's a little bit of a softer rollout than, you know, two next year, like I, I think they're gonna move back. So that's yeah. re realistic. Um, but yeah, so I, so I, there, it's going somewhere. I mean, you know, and I, I kind of like the idea of people getting involved, even though it's not like a story thing where like, you want to see what happens to Charlie. And then he, you know, it's not a rock opera at all. It's, it's just song cycle. Um, but there's a thematic thing that the thematic journey, like a, a spiritual journey that's happening. Um, and so, and the, in each of the, each of the records has a, a distinct character to it. So um kind of like what I'm dealing with. And, and uh, I hope I've answered your questions satisfactorily. <laughs> yes, yes, you've done great. Uh, um, one or two more questions before we get into, you know, uh, a couple of songs here. So um, you're, you just put out the Pretty Girls video. Was that you or your brother that directed that? That was me. Um, I, um, my brother did come in with one idea at the very end that I thought was pretty cool, which was this thing of having it be like a French TV show. Uh, so it was his idea to, I don't know if you've seen the video, but at the very beginning yeah. and the end, there was this kind of French voice, just kind of silly. And that was him doing that French no, voice. Was it? And, okay. And kind of making it look like a, a kind of flickering, you know, VHS or something TV. So so that was his concept. Uh, so so I directed th that video, but, but he came in with that concept, which I really, really liked. Uh, and so that's, so he, he did definitely help uh, and he also colorized the video, um, which is in video production or film production. It's sort of, it's a kind of an equivalent to mastering and audio if people know that, but it's like, you know, you can sort of tune the, the colors a bit. And so, so he was helpful on that video, but I was the director of it. Um, you pulled all the other pieces together, the leaves and the- Yeah, it was a, I mean, I worked with several different animators and had people, women submitted footage from around the world. It's turned out a, kind of a majority of them were from Eastern Europe, just because I had been planning to go for a tour over there when the pandemic hit. So I had all these sort of like contacts and things going. Um, in, in Eastern Europe. And then I just kind of put out a call on Facebook. I was like, okay, I'm not coming, but people can send in footage to be in this video. And so, you know, I had women sending in um, footage of themselves, just like dancing with their iPhone or whatever, um, or, or their Android, whatever, with their phones. Yeah. And um, uh, so putting all those elements together, animators, 
editing footage that were submitted. It was a quite a, it was kind of a, it was a difficult production in a way, just because there were a lot of elements to put together. But but I want I, I had a kind of cute idea of like this idea of springtime and the sort of all the colors of femininity and the sort of idea of of pretty girls being you know in any you know pretty girls being any shape and size. And I have women of you know a very big age range, and um, I really wanted to express. Kind of like the song that the song pretty girls doesn't totally um it's partly about you know the experience of being a, a boy and being intoxicated or whatever but it's also um intoxicated by femininity i mean but um but it's also kind of about the underside the the in a kind of light way it's not a heavy song at all but in a kind of light way it's about the underside of what does that do to to the girls and the women, you know, um, both the ones who are not considered pretty and the ones who are, who are kind of seen and not really seen, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and that video was, it, it, ultimately I'm very happy with just the kind of playful quality of it, so yeah. Yeah, it's really creative. Um, and um, I think maybe my last question, um, I saw that Live in the Vineyard shared your uh, video for Our Love is Beautiful. Did you, have you played Live in the Vineyard before? I did something with them. What did I do? I I, I did a perform home performance, I think. Oh, okay. Before. Yeah, they're doing a bunch of those, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if if you haven't done, I mean, their festival, I mean, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's yeah. out here in, in Napa and, uh, and they, uh, I mean, they get they bring bands in and uh, and play these really intimate shows that are I mean I mean just so cool stripped down acoustic uh -huh. um, and uh, throughout the valley and you drink wine and have you know watch That's bands great. it's it's what it's exactly it's awesome right <laughs> I've I've even though I grew up in the in San Francisco I've spent I mean I've like barely ever been to Napa like twice or something you know it's like it's yeah. not an area I know at all like I've um, so that sounds that sounds delightful. It sounds like a you know, sideways northern Cal, NorCal edition. Um, yeah, 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 absolutely. It, it it is really you know, and it's uh, uh I mean, it's it, you should you should work that. I'm just saying. So <laughs> I, I should work that out. Okay. Yeah, no, just, just work like, it work it out. That's it. Yeah. That's okay. It, right. So, <laughs> I'll I'll have I'll have my people uh call their people. That no, that okay. sounds that sounds lovely. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, we haven't the whole live perform like it's like we don't know we haven't known what's going on for so long it's like i'm not even gonna kind of think about live performance until but now it does seem like okay now we can start thinking about it again yeah um, it it feels like everything the flip just completely switched this past week right like it just feels yeah. like because festivals and tours and everything yeah. like are yeah. being announced and it's just like oh, i miss concerts so much i told i already said that but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want it to be safe, but I'm just so ready for live music to be back too, which I think is a, yeah. a good segue into you playing some live music eh? sure. <laughs> and scratching that itch, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, the lo-fi, like I said, I, I uh, it, it's amazing that we've come this far in the pandemic and I didn't like get like a, you know, proper audio set up, but here we are. It's like the amps, I have an amp over here and I'm here and you can tell me. I hope the blend of 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 uh, elements is 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 okay. So, so I guess I'll play. Um, I guess the song maybe you maybe I'm thinking because of the people who reached out to you. You, uh, our love is beautiful. Probably would be a a, a correct choice. So, sure. Um, so I'll start there. Unless you want. Unless I. I mean, if you have a request, I suppose I should honor that. We can do our love, love is beautiful, and then maybe pretty girls. Okay. Is that your new, new video? I was, do you know the song Alexandria and Me by any chance? I heard it. Yes, I heard it a couple times off the new album. Yes. Yeah. We can we can do that one. That's maybe a good I'll one do, too. Maybe I'll do that right now. Maybe I'll start with that high energy moment. So this is a song. Okay. Um, and actually, what's it's also kind of nice. You were asking me about the theme of Earth City. This is one of I released two singles on the same day in February both sing things from the upcoming album one's called in new york which is a piano song if we had time and 
go to the piano right there, but uh, an Alexandria and me is uh, whatever more of a kind of guitar song with drums and everything. But um, the, the, in New York is obviously about New York, but Alexandria and me is actually a song about Los Angeles, about the old downtown LA. There was a hotel called the Alexandria where I had some exhilarating and horrific experiences kind of before gentrification down there, um, mystical, almost level, terrifying. Anyway, so this is a song about cities. And so away I had, I put up this little pair of, of before Earth City, the trilogy started, I put out a pair that was literally about the two biggest coastal cities of the United States. Um, and um, not that the whole thing is literally about actual cities, but the cities as a uh, part of the story. So, um, so this is uh, Alexandria and me, and you can start shouting if something's wrong sonically. I'd say the audio was just fine. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 
Our Love is Beautiful, which I promised. Um, this is my song for everybody. So, you know, that's another theme of Earth City. <laughs> Excellent. I like it. All right. Good. Glad, to be, <laughs> glad to be of service. Uh, so do you ask me questions to wrap up? <laughs> yeah, that's a good place to, uh, to end. So uh, now you're, 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 you're mentioned, you know, it's starting to feel like it's time to, to get out there. What are, what are kind of the feelings in LA as, uh, you know, as you kind of start to venture into this next chapter of whatever we're in right now. <laughs> um, I mean, I can't speak for the city um, in this case. Um, I think people are, are, you know, like everywhere kind of itching to get out, you know, and 
the whole thing was so politicized. I mean, I'm kind of like just the whole like vaccines and the masks and the, all the politics around all of it. It's just like, I'm personally exhausted with, with that side of it. Just the, just like, I, I can't even sort of engage with, with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think people are starting, you know, it, it, it's slow California, as you know, you know, Governor Newsom announced, we're like, I know the CD said, said, CDC said this, but we're going to take it a little slower. Um, Cause LA was hit so hard. I mean, it was just brutal, yeah. you know? So this is not a place where I think you can get away with saying it's a fiction. Yeah, I mean, it was just like really bad here. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, the clubs aren't open yet. Um, as far as I know, I don't think the clubs are open, but um, you know, restaurants have started opening up and, so I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm personally like itching to, to, to travel uh, with my music or without, or just traveling itself, yeah. but probably with my music, um, you know, touring or whatever. And, and so, you know, for me, I'm, I'm like, so ready <laughs> like for, I mean, I'm just so like kind of tired of being and tired of my own company, you know, so. Um, I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I, uh, insult myself but you know what I mean yeah so of course of course yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming down to Joshua Tree next next weekend for the Joshua Tree Festival uh you know it's a distance thing out in the uh, you know where you have a pod and everything and right like space limited out but uh yeah it'll be, it'll be nice to see live music again so yeah yeah, yeah. bring yeah. sunscreen Yes, good call because it's going to be hot and uh, and I burn easily. Uh, you look, I, you look. I I understand. I'm also I'm a I'm a freckly. Uh, um, <laughs> There's you know. no tanning. There's no tanning. Tanning. It's, yeah. It's a, I mean, uh, did you grow up in California? Yeah. Yeah. So. So were you told, like, as a teenager, you just need to get a base tan? Did uh, you ever hear I, that? No. Is that a, is that one that comes often? As I. <laughs> I gave it to like my sister or whatever. It was like, you just need to get a base tan. I'm like, I just like burn myself again. You know, it's just like, would like yeah. burn my, cause like there wasn't, there's no base tan with freckly no. people. No, I, I, I remember a trip the summer after ninth grade where we went to the Bahamas you know, and we're on, we were on a houseboat and everything. And out in the middle of nowhere where you, no matter which direction you look, you can't see any land. And I just, I burned to a crisp. I couldn't put on a shirt. Oh. I couldn't, any day. It was painful, it was hell, you know, and to spend yeah. most of the trip inside the boat. <laughs> yeah. It was so... I try and be really careful with sunscreen, yeah. but sometimes I forget and then you pay the price. So yeah. yeah. So don't forget when you go to Joss. I, yeah. I will make sure it is on hand yeah. and all and everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't even I didn't know about that. But is that happening at like Pappy and Harriet's kind of area or is it out like actually huh. in the desert? I think it's in the desert. Um wow. I I I didn't even know about it, but that sounds really yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a band. Uh, a band named Conbrio is playing that weekend, and uh, they're they're from San Francisco, and uh -huh. um, interviewed them a handful of times, and they're yeah, really cool. a great live band. So cool. Uh, yeah, sounds Good band great. Um, get out there and see. Also, that you were on a houseboat in the Bahamas, I just you know just even just even imagining that, I'm like, ah, oh, I mean, I get it on the 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 sunburn thing, but that sounds pretty nice. <laughs> that sounds pretty it, nice. It, the yeah. parts I couldn't appreciate of it, I have those I have fond memories of, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other parts are a little tougher, but right, yeah. Uh, uh, Ethan, I want to thank you for taking the time. You yeah, know, and thank you for having me on. Uh, it's it was a, a pleasure chatting with you, and um, you know, keep in touch. Absolutely, and I wish you luck with the uh, new album as well when that comes out, and then you know, hopefully. Yes, my really name is well. Ethan Gold. I have been here representing Ethan Gold. That's my, how do, what do you think? <laughs> that was a great pitch speech. I, I, yeah. I like it. We gotta get the name out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've been told something like, oh, you gotta like say your Instagram. I'm like, I can't. Uh, people, <laughs> people, can, people can use use their smarts. They can find me. They'll find you. Yeah. 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 Yes. So, yeah. Uh, All right. Well, come to the Bay and play some shows and, yeah. and live, you know, and we'll have a, a glass of wine when you play live in the vineyard. Right. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs>
That was great. <laughs> that was the interview with Ethan Gold here on Concert Pipeline. And Jens, that takes us to the final segment on the program. What is it? It is time to talk about some music news. <laughs> That's right. We each have a couple of stories to wind out the program. What's going on in the music world? Um, I'll start out. Um, do you remember what my favorite movie is, Jens? All right. Is this like a setup? Because it <laughs> started with "Do you remember?" So I feel like this do is a you setup. remember what my favorite ooh, 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 movie ooh, 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 is, Jens? Uh, it's uh, the one about the guy follows the band yeah throughout their tour yeah and um and i can never name remember the name of this damn movie and i don't know why because it's not really a hard name to for, to remember um um and it's got goldie hahn's daughter in it um kate hudson yeah uh, kate hudson it's uh got this crazy story about uh this airplane uh adventure where the whole band thought they were going to crash and die and they declared their love for each other uh you interviewed uh the rolling stone editor um ben fun torres yeah fun fun torres yes uh who was portrayed in that film uh it had some other famous actors in it i, um, I can help you here if you're <laughs> uh hold on hold on hold on uh i'm gonna take spend at least 20 more minutes trying to remember this oh good good uh uh, no, not there. Okay, it's almost famous. Yeah, that's okay. Well, Jens, I am excited to share with you that almost there's an almost famous soundtrack that's reissued as a massive 103 song box set. What? Yes, across five CDs and seven LPs, the deluxe reissue marks the first. Uh, um, all of the film's music will be released together in one package. Uh, wow. And yeah, they, they celebrated, their, the movie celebrated its 20th anniversary last year. And uh, so they're reissuing this soundtrack as a massive box set on July 9th. Um, and, uh, and then so the expanded track list includes songs by Led Zeppelin, The Beach Boys, Joni Mitchell, Neil Young and Crazy Horse, The Who, Fleetwood Mac, and alongside all the material created for the film's fictional rock group, Stillwater, uh, which was written mm -hmm. by Crow, Nancy Wilson, and Peter Frampton, um, and um, also included Nancy Wilson's original score, uh, and even Elton John's Tiny Dancer, uh, newly mixed with the cast members singing alongside the song as featured nice. in the film. That's cool. Yeah. That was an iconic yeah. song in that film. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of other goodies in the box set also. Uh, like William Miller, Miller's Rolling Stone cover story on the band, a 40 page photo book, backstage passes, Lester Bang's cream business card, replica ticket stubs, and more. And, uh, and it's a 13 disc box, box set um, uh, all in. And there's so there's like it's like $300, mm -hmm. something along, along those lines. It's, it's intense. I was taking a look at it. Uh, That's but, crazy. But it would be cool to have all six of Stillwater songs. Um, yeah. And uh, those songs and are good else. too. Mm -hmm. So Fever when is this coming dog. out? Exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, July thirteenth, I believe, is what it said. Um, I believe July. It's July is, anyway. Is, July are there only a certain number of copies or there's, anything like that? There's there's different box sets that you can get. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering. I mean, I'm guessing it's not going to be on Apple Music. Like that, I don't know. Right. Uh, how does that stuff? How does that stuff work when you know with box sets? Like, is the whole thing on Apple Music or, as well? I don't or? know. That's probably one of those things that you actually have to buy. Yeah. Um, and and so a lot you have of the it, box and everything in it. Yeah. On July thirteenth, uh, Paramount is going to release Almost Famous for the first time on four K Ultra HD, uh, as well as on limited edition Blu Ray. Um, it includes both a theatrical cut plus access to a digital copy uh, and the bootleg cut, AKA untitled along with new bonus content offering a backstage pass into the creative mm -hmm. process through a new interview with Crow, extended scenes, rock school sessions, a look at the casting and costumes and more. So there is a lot of good stuff coming for Almost Famous fans. 
So, nice. The long, nice. long shot of it, so. At the very least, it'll be worth watching in 4K. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty excited. I mean, I'm not spending $300. On it. I love the movie. I can't do $300 for all that. Like, And the CD player, like, the only CD player I have is in my car. I guess I could use my DVD player to play it in a TV or whatever, but it's just... right. It's kind of it's a, a 4K thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what? So, uh, okay. I'm thinking of my favorite scene in that film, um, but I want to hear from you. What is your favorite scene in that entire movie? Favorite scene in the film? Oh my gosh. I don't, can I just name one? Uh, I, man, I, you can, I you just can love... name one of your favorite scenes if you have more than one. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I love, when the, I love when the band's backstage and they have uh, Jimmy Fallon as the manager and uh, um, and William Miller is you know is there and you know and they get into a fight over the T-shirt. Um, uh -huh. One one of the guys like the two of the guys are like you know shadowed in the back and there the T-shirts are available by the way uh, on the website the Stillwater T-shirts so I might get one of the T-shirts. Uh, there we go. Uh, you know, and call it that way. I mean, that's yeah. a really cool, cool scene. Uh, but also, I am a golden, which leads into I am a golden god, uh, with Russell Hammond up on the roof and jumping into the pool uh, right after that. So, um, you got it. That was did my I get yours? Scene okay. Of the entire film. I figured. Yeah. I figured we were gonna get there. So. <laughs> yeah, the whole scene about him like being on the roof, and you just knew that at some point he was probably gonna make a jump for the pool uh -huh. right weren't 100 percent sure if he was going to make it in the pool or not but the whole dialogue between him and everyone you know at that party was just hilarious yeah yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was great yeah really yeah. solid movie i love it um and it's timeless and one of those i don't watch a ton but i every time i do it's just like takes me back and, and i love and um and so good stuff coming to almost famous fans you have a story for us james yes i do okay you want to know who was not in the movie Almost Famous? Uh, who, I mean, I'm sure there are a couple of people, but <laughs> who was not in the movie? Good segue. Bono. He was not in the movie. You're right. At least that, not that I know of. Maybe he was a little extra or something. But <laughs> I yeah, got a story yeah. about Bono. So, um, so we got Bono teaming up with Linda Perry on a new song called Eden to find love in parentheses. Mm. Why don't they just call it Eden? Why do they have to like add stuff in parentheses? I know, just choose your name, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, just call it Eden or just call it Eden to find love. But the parentheses is like- yeah, That really throws you off, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so this is taken from the soundtrack uh, to the documentary film called Citizen Pen. Uh, so, uh, Bono's collaborated with Perry. Uh, this is a brand new song. Um, the track is available to listen to. Um, do we have that? Do have that? Well, there you got it. Yeah, it's okay. What are your, what are your, what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. That's my thoughts. <laughs> Would that song have made it into the film Almost Famous? Know, it kind of fits the genre a little bit. And the styling mm -hmm. of the video kind of uh, lines up with that a little bit too. So I could I could see it in Almost Famous a little bit, but uh, I mean, that song, it, I don't know, just first listen, I, you know, didn't do a lot for me, but. Right. All right, so uh, Bono, uh, his work on the song uh, features as part of the soundtrack uh, for the album for the Don Hardly directed documentary film Citizen Pen, which was shot in the wake of the 2010 Haiti earthquake and explores mm. the advocacy and activism of actor Sean Penn and his organization, JP Haitian Relief Organization, now called CORE. 
Uh, that's probably why the film has the word pen in it. it might be it, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, it's uh, that film or the soundtrack has been released on May 24th. Oh, that was, yeah, okay. So that was what a week ago. Um, yeah. And the film is being scored by the former Four Non Blondes artist, Perry. That's where Linda comes from. So um, is that it? Yeah. We, I mean, we I got that? There's a new Bono song, I guess, is the long and short of it. I right? guess that's uh, the exciting so part of I, this. I haven't heard a lot from him in years. I, I don't know. It feels right. like they haven't done much in a while. It just feels that way at least. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, great that he's got a new song now. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Bono yeah. says, this is an extraordinary document uh, of an extraordinary man's work. OK. Uh, talking about the subject of Citizen Pen. Uh, putting not just his brain, but his body in the way of various injustices. For all the gravitas, the dude still cracks me up, Bono says. All right, well, I got to better listen to watch the movie too, huh? Apparently you have some homework to do. Yeah, uh, Yeah. okay. I can, I can put that on the list of things to do this, for this week. Yeah. Well, my next story, and this is about a music festival uh, that that had a little flub, I'll say, uh, is a music festival with a flub. Yeah, there was a little issue where fans were left uh, less than pleased, let's say, uh, and that is the Glastonbury Festival. Uh, they apologize as fans were locked out of the uh, live at Worthy Farm live stream. Ah. Um, yeah, and. Um, well, yeah, they shouldn't complain. I mean, they weren't at the fire festival, right? Right. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, get some perspective. Yeah. So it was a virtual event that um, had performances by Wolf Alice, Haim, mm -hmm. Coldplay, um, and the debut appearance of Tom York and Johnny Greenwood from uh, Radioheads, their new band, The Smile. Uh, uh -huh. Each set was performed at a different location around the iconic festival site. Uh, and um, Wolf Alice uh, kicked off the performance, but a lot of fans on Twitter said that they couldn't access the stream. They had unique oh. codes that they had, they had bought mm. uh, to be to be able to watch it, but they were, it was flagged as invalid. Um, mm -hmm. And they, you know, the the Glastonbury Festival was working on it on the on the back end, um, you know, with the pr pr provider of the stream service, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and they um, and fans are obviously tweeting and being like, "Ah, oh, that sucks. That's ridiculous," you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, there was one fan um, that, uh, that tweeted that, um, uh, okay, hold on, there's not, hold on, I'm looking for this good tweet because there were, there's a lot of tweets and tweets in this, um, this thing, but, um, okay, I don't know why I'm looking, anyway, some people were vivid, livid, uh, okay. I can't find a tweet because it's too many words. But one fan was like, hey, look, you know, um, there's bigger fish to fry and think about where the money's going, right? The money's going to a good cause and to these these bands mm -hmm. that haven't been haven't been performing live right, for, right. Uh, for, for a long time. So uh, they did end up taking away the uh, the code requirement so that the, the, uh, the stream was able to be viewed later and also extending amount, the amount of time that it could be watched for. The, it, people could rewind and watch from the beginning, but people wanted to watch it live, of course. So, right. You know, yeah, those people yeah. just just won't just won't be happy. But That's they did their true. they did the right thing and they freed it up so everybody is able to mm. uh, to see it at some point. Yeah. So, cool. yes. So yeah, technology. Who needs it's it? Part of where we're at, you know, it's going to happen from time to time. It just sucks, we, you know, <laughs> when it happens like that, but. Looking. Yeah, you got these expectations coming in, you know, you're excited about it. And especially since we've been through this whole COVID thing for the past year, you know, we can, we can, we'll get what we can take when it comes to music and then boom, you know, oh my God, we got some technical difficulties and so much for the live stream. Yes. Well, you have a big announcement for us, Jens. I do. Big announcement. Your, your next story is a big announcement. Yes. 
You don't All rock. Right. <laughs> that, I mean, you're just beside yourself with excitement, I could tell. Uh. It's been a while since I've been to Bottle Rock. I'm trying to remember if I've ever been to Bottle Rock. Have, Have we you been, been to Bottle Rock? I don't, don't think I've, you've gone. I don't think I've ever been to Bottle Rock. You've been, I, you, I bought tickets no, you, you bought a ticket, or, and then you yeah. like decided to go to Alaska instead. You're like, oh, right. I'm just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah and i was super super excited about going to battle rock and i'd taken the time off and everything but all of a sudden there were these there was this killer deal to, to do an alaska trip that it was like, oh my god this price is so good let's just jump on this and then i i sold the bottle rock ticket for half the and i got like you. half yeah. the price for it and i that, that i was so bitter about that, I'm like, oh, I, didn't even get, I mean, I wasn't expecting full price, but I was not, I mean, half price? Maybe three quarters at least, come three on. Three quarters you know? price, at least something. Yeah. I mean, they're not cheap. And ever yeah. since then, I've like had a, you know, stick in my ass about Bottle Rock. And I've been like, you <laughs> like know, it's Bottle Rock's fault that you couldn't stop yeah, bottle, Yes, for exactly. The tickets shouldn't be that <laughs> much. Some money. If, the, if the resale yeah. rate, yeah, exactly. They're overpriced fucking, anyway. So, uh, Bottle Rock is fantastic. You've been a bunch of times and our lineup is pretty freaking exciting this year. I had told my girlfriend, I was like, there's no way I can do a three day festival again. It's too, it's too much. Yeah. You know, even though yeah. it's th three miles from my house, you know, I can bike uh -huh. there easily. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, I just, I can't do a three day festival, you know, but then they announced the lineup and I'll tell you two bands were removed that were head headliners. That would that being Red Hot Chili Peppers and Dave Matthews Band, and who are they replaced with, Jens? Oh my God, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they just rescheduled and they'll be playing at uh, you know at a Bottle Rock concert coming <laughs> soon next year. Next uh -huh. year. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe they weren't quite ready to be. Uh, well, you know, the band the so band stuck. So they, you know, the COVID thing happened, that whole COVID thing. And then, yeah. you know, that it got pushed back a year and they were, mm -hmm. they had held on for the May date uh, because it was originally rescheduled to May, mm -hmm. but then that, mm -hmm. that, then they had to be pushed back again to September. Mm -hmm. And then I guess they just couldn't do it or something. I didn't look into yeah. what their, their excuse was, but, right, <laughs> or right. if they have, have other <laughs> obligations, but. Um, All right. Anyway. Let me uh, name the big three to start. Hit it. We got freaking Guns and Roses. Yes, the original lineup slash and uh, exactly and the original lineup. How exciting is that? Yeah, yeah. How exciting it's, is that? Do we have news on what day they're popping up? Is that a Friday or what? So at the time of this recording, the the single day lineups have not been announced. Um, that's happening tomorrow morning as of this recording. But uh, uh, so we we don't have that news right now. Uh, uh, but. But I, I mean, I think they're probably Friday. Stevie Nicks, oh, I said the second one. Uh, no, I didn't hear you. <laughs> right. I didn't hear what you said. So you were going to say, you were going to comment on uh, Guns N' Roses and whether you have seen them before live or not. I, I have seen them uh, once back, not with the, the original lineup or anything, but back in the Chinese democracy days when the, uh, they played in San Jose and, um, and I got a chance to see them and they were supposed to come on at like 10 p.m. and, and uh, Axel and Crew. They didn't show up till midnight. Till after midnight, yeah. Oh God. And, and I worked at eight a.m. the next morning, and it was a oh, wreck. Jesus. But but uh, yeah. but it was worth it, absolutely. But, but those are the still... kind of concerts you remember, right? And so <laughs> I was, and yeah, and so seeing the with the original lineup and everything, I mean, will be epic, you know? So, yeah, totally. You know, I'm uh, I'm I'm still bitter about the last Guns and Roses concert I went to. Uh -huh. uh, I've only seen them once, and I I don't know why I said the last Guns, right? Uh, oh, because I've seen Slash before. I saw Slash perform in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He came on as a surprise special guest, uh, which he does from time to time in LA because he lives there, I guess. But um, it was really cool to see him on stage. And uh, he was with, uh, I don't remember, but um, uh, he was just playing guitar with the opening act and then they opened for uh, YouTube. It was pretty freaking awesome. Yes. Um, but what I was trying to say is that um, I saw Guns N' Roses at at t Park or whatever it's called now, mm -hmm. uh, right here in San Francisco. And I had to take a beer break. And unbeknownst to me, I took my beer break at the worst possible freaking time. I got up, went to the beer line, stood in mm -hmm. line for the beer, got my beer, came back just to realize 
that while I was gone, they had done a cover of Pink Floyd. And I, I don't remember which one it was. It's like Comfortably Numb or something. And it was epic. And I had missed the whole goddamn thing. I was so mad for the rest of the show. It's the thing you can't leave, you know? <laughs> you can't, do, when you go to a concert, the takeaway here is if you, when you go to a concert, when you sit down, you sit your ass down, you don't move. You appreciate yeah. every second of it. <laughs> so if I go see Guns N' Roses again, I'm not moving. Are you coming out to Bottle Rock to see Guns N' Roses again? Say it here on the yeah, podcast. I might, I might. There's a very, 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 very good chance that I will, but I'm not going to buy my ticket full price. I'm going to buy my ticket the uh -huh. day before the show. And price. <laughs> You've learned your lesson. I see, want my money back. I, and see, I got, I just went for it. I paid full price for tickets. I know the lesson you had, and I've seen it before as well, where it becomes half yeah. price. I, I'm under this conception that, you know, people really want to go to concerts these tickets are going to be really valuable the three-day pass is sold out in under an hour uh wow. so i mean but that's happened before and then there's the retail yeah. values the resale value still goes down as it gets close yeah. i don't know anyway yeah. i wanted to have them in hand i have them in exactly. hand yeah. um, who else is headlining we got stevie next you might we have said do. that before uh I do. have you seen steve next i have not i had an opportunity to but i, I don't know mm -hmm. No, I, I have I have seen her do five songs with Tom Petty at the Greek Theater, uh, from right. where where I was in the photo pit, and I was right. So mm -hmm. I've taken I've taken pictures of Stevie Nicks live, which is really awesome. I haven't seen her in a natural you know full set or anything, but seeing her with Tom mm -hmm. Petty is as great as it can get, right? So yeah, um, those are two icons right there. that have done a lot of work together. Yeah, so that was two thousand six of that, that I saw her. It's been a while, <laughs> fifteen years. <laughs> 15 freaking it? years can you believe it yeah. that's like yeah how does time go by so fast the third yeah. big 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 header here it's a band we talk about once in a while on the podcast though. every now and then <laughs> not very often sometimes we talk about uh them uh you know at the close of every podcast but yeah. we got the Foo fighters we do yeah. I was not expecting them to show up this and, year. And so I had a little debate with my girlfriend because she was like, no, they were announced before. Like, uh, I mean, that, but, and she couldn't find anything to support that assessment. But I was like, there's no way that they were announced before because I would, I would have known we would have talked about it on the podcast all the and time. You would have not like, forgotten would, it. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. That's not something that, but it also, when they announced it, it's not something that really popped out like Foo Fighter, like uh, you know it just it felt natural like as part mm -hmm. of that lineup and you mm -hmm. know and it's amazing and i've seen them they played bottle rock a couple of years ago you know and and it was so great to i mean to, to see them live at bottle rock it was so cool yeah um, fantastic so, so i'm excited for, to see them again absolutely um and cool, they cool. better they, they better have learned their lesson and not you know save ever long for last or Make sure that damn song is, uh, you know, is finished before 10 p.m. because they were in the middle of Everlong when the curfew hit and their power got shut, shut down. the power. I know. And it's, remind me, but didn't they, they knew, they, they, I mean, they were conscious of the time, right? But they decided to say, fuck it, we're going to play this they anyway. Were, I don't even think it was a fuck it. I think they were just like, you know, had finishing their set and then uh -huh. the, a minute and a half. We were talking a minute and a half left in the set, uh -huh. you know, because uh -huh. it was their last song, you know. Yeah. Nope, yeah. it's time. It's time, to, it's time to go. No, you know, no second. So they're there just anything. playing with no power. Yeah. Just strumming their uh, guitars with no juice. I mean, I <laughs> see. I was three people back because I camped out there all day, so I couldn't even really tell because they just kept playing. They finished mm. the song, and but and most right, so you're there in it. Couldn't have. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't tell. So, couldn't but it was. Right. Yeah, it was cool, but I heard that later and read about it in the newspaper and everything. So, <laughs> um, so those yeah. are the big three. We got a bunch of other awesome uh, uh, bands here, just to name a couple of Miley, Miley Cyrus. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> and she'll, got, and she'll uh, probably, I'm sure she will do a song with Stevie Nicks because they have a song together. So I don't know if it'll be her set or Stevie's uh -huh. that, that happens in or both or what have you, but I'm sure that there will be a camp, you know. Sweet. Camera Let's see. Uh, you're going to have to help me out with this. Brandy Carlisle. Didn't we talk about Brandy Carlisle recently? Um, I, feel, I feel like we have. I thought we did. Sounds mm -hmm. really familiar. Uh, Cage of the Elephant. Um, uh, oh my God. Jimmy Eat World. Phineas. Mm -hmm. There are lots of familiar, uh, familiar names here in this lineup. Yeah. There's, I mean, a lot that I'm excited about. Like, I mean, who else? Um, 
Uh, Milky Chance is cool. Um, Mavis Staples is playing again. John Batiste, um, mm -hmm. he's a really cool piano player. Um, uh, Walk Off the Earth is uh, is great. Um, I'm trying to see who else the village people are playing. Um, I know, that, dude. I will go to see the village people. I saw sure. that. Like, that's hilarious, dude. That's just a, <laughs> that's just like time warp. You know, let's go back. Matt Nathanson is awesome. He's you know we great great to see him live again. Um, Atlas Genius. I mean, some bands have been on the show, right? Atlas Genius, White Reaper. Uh, we've had both of them uh, on on the program. Um, yeah. Yep. Full Moon Alice, I mean, which is interesting because it used to just be Moon Alice, so I don't know what Full Moon Alice is, like Full Moon Alice or whatever, right. I, I don't know what the deal okay. is there, uh, but um, yeah, just tons of great bands and be able to, you know, have a lot of fun throughout the festival, so I'm right. looking forward to it. Um, okay, so um, this is when again? September, oh, here we go, so, more on September 3rd <laughs> to 5th. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like Labor Day weekend, right? I think. Labor Day weekend. Um, okay, I'm yeah. I'm sure that's gonna yeah. be like next week. You know, time's gonna <laughs> fly. It's, it's right around the corner. Yeah, early September. Okay, so I'll buy yeah. my ticket like September the second. Oh, okay, so I'll buy the three day pass for like five bucks. You're gonna come out three days, back, huh? Yeah, yeah. Redeemed. Yeah. Okay, come hang with us for three days. I like it. Uh, well, well, exciting news to come. We're, we'll we'll uh, we'll see if we can get it, some of the bottle rock bands to be on the program ahead of it to, to you know hype it to talk through it, talk through it, you know see where they've been at the past year, you know that sort of thing. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll work on that Definitely. over the next couple of months. But um, but really excited about the lineup. And you mentioned Foo Fighters. Yes, we have a Dave Grohl story, Jens. Um, that wasn't the Dave Grohl story. I thought <laughs> it, it fits. Story. It fits, but but we'll, we have to we have to keep our tread up. So um, all right, sounds so good. So Dave Grohl is going to co-host the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Um, oh, actually, sweet! Actually, this it will have already happened by the time this episode airs, but it's you know Monday yeah. the the twenty fourth is when he's uh, he's doing this. Um, How's Jimmy and, even going to keep uh, keep up with this? I don't understand how that works. A co-host, you know, yeah. yeah. Why he's having a co-host? It's a little, little odd, but hey, I'm I'm interested. I'll check it out. Right. Um, yeah. So he's going to deliver the monologue. He's going to play games, and he's going to interview the episode's other guest, comedian Jim Jeffries, who is really funny, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and he's not uh, going to be the uh, the show's musical guest. That's going to be Blake Shelton. So. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So, but uh, an interesting opportunity for him, and worth checking out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I wonder if Blake is going to do any Foo Fighter material. <laughs> he better. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, I'll check out the show. Uh, we'll let's hope he does at least. Right? A, yeah, let's hope at least he does a cover. Yeah, country cover of Everlong. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, oh God. Yeah, it might not be good. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. But, <clears throat> scratch that idea. <laughs> that is our show for today so i want to thank ethan gold for being on the program and next week on the show we're going to have an artist named dylan rockoff who's also doing a couple of songs for the show sounds good yep. looking forward to hearing about the uh hearing the interview uh, and um that's our show that's our show so for all of us here at concert pipeline that's jim shippel and that is steve jones we'll catch you next time